first speaker is going to be Dr. Briggs Stockler. Dr. Stockler is Assistant Clinical Professor in Farm Animal Medicine at Auburn University. He did a stint in California and also at Mississippi State University. Graduated from veterinary school in Brazil in 2002 and is currently working on a PhD focusing on the GI microbiome of cattle um, and is an ambulatory instructor at Auburn University. He's going to talk about um, hay analysis. Please help me welcome Dr. Rick Stuckler. Thank you, Dr. Houston. Oh, Mike. All right, uh, good afternoon, and I'll, um, we'll try to uh, cover this with y'all. It's nothing new, and this is not meant to be a, a nutrition 15-minute uh, uh, either, um, but this is something that I encounter uh, every day, not every day, but every, you know, a couple of days of the week when clients call and say, hey, I don't know what to do with my cattle. I've, I've, I, I deworm them all the time, and they're still thin. Well, perhaps it's not a warm issue, perhaps it's a food problem, and, um, well, no conflicts of interest. And I don't want, um, I'll hop to the next slide in a, in a second here. And uh, so, to give you a quick example, I had a, a farm call about two weeks ago, right after we had the, all the, the bad weather here in the south. Yes, we did get three and a half inches of snow in Alabama, and it was a mess. Um, and uh, uh, a gentleman called and said, hey, I've, I've been looking for a, a large animal veterinarian to help me, and I can find one. He's on the west side of Georgia, and, uh, and, and please, can you help me? And I was like, okay, where are you at? And he was about 70 miles from, the, from Auburn, and I was like, well, that's a little bit too far for us to go, but what's going on? And he said, well, I already had uh, six cows die on me, and there are three more that are down, and I cannot find uh, uh, a veterinarian to help me. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll come help you. So there we went, and I got to the farm, and uh, make a long story short, the three cows that were down, I ended up euthanizing them, and I said, all right, let's do some necropsies here and see, try to identify what's going on. So, but as, as, as I drove to the pasture, I, I saw there were about 180 head and four uh, hay rings, and to the to my left there was a pile of hay, round bales, and I looked at the students. I was like, "What do you all think is going on?" And they were like, "Well, these cows are thin, and the food is horrendous, and it looks really dark." And, and this is no good. And I was like, yes, this is no good. So I hop out of the truck, introduce myself, talk to the owner, and, and we start talking about several things. And he said, hey, dog. And then he made the mistake to say, hey, at your first impression, what do you think is wrong? So I, I, I don't hold things back very much. So I told him, I said, your cows are thin, and there are way too many cows for this area and your food looks horrendous. You have mold all over the place. Well, but that did not kill my cows. I said, I'm, I'm not saying they did, but you asked for my first impression and that's what you got. So anyway, so that wasn't a very good start to meet a new client and <laughs> telling him exactly what was going on. So I had three necropsies, opened the first cow, and I'm running my mouth the way that I do. And I told him, I said, listen, if, if, if this is what it is, I'm going to pop this room and open, okay, and we're going to see dark rumen papillae. If the rumen papillae is present, we're going to see ulcerations. We're going to see maybe moldy, chew, non-chewed feed and blah, 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 blah. He said, okay, well, I, I, it's, it's impressive that you're already telling me what you're going to find. So, well, that's how it is. So I'm going to start this, pre this presentation backwards, talking about hay quality and mycotoxins and why we need to really encourage clients to check their feed. So these were the results from these animals that I'm telling you, okay? So nice, beautiful rumen ulcer right there, okay? Look at the color of that rumen wall, that rumen uh, epithelium, okay? Rumen, rumen papillae gone, all right? Look at that. Mode open, and that was beautiful right there in front of me. Okay, so just to give you a, an idea, 
uh, you should have less than 20 parts per billion of aflatoxins every time you check, you know, you do your analysis, okay? Now your question will be, well, were these calves? No, these were six to 10 year old mama cows, okay? So this room in pathway is like ridiculous. I mean, it's non-existent, okay? So yes, I was right with my first impression and, uh, and at least I was able to prove it to him that that's what was. Um, so, so why is that a big deal? Uh, can we tell, literally, can we tell the amount of nutrients if we walk in a pasture and see a pasture like this, grass like that, or a round bale or, or a square bale, okay? Perhaps with practice, perhaps with age, perhaps with, uh, um, you know, what granddad used to do way back then. Sure, we can give uh, uh, well-educated guesses, but it's still a guess, okay? Also, the big thing that usually farmers forget or um, what, what kind of group of animals are you trying to feed, okay? Um, out, of, out of technicality, you should, not be, you, should not, you should not need to feed a cow and calf pair the same way that you feed a steer, the same way that you feed, you know, a replacement heifer, okay? The same way that you feed a pregnant cow. You can, all those animals, they use a different amount, as we all know, different amount of nutrition, different, they require a different amount of energy. So it's really important to learn exactly what kind of a group of animals uh, uh, they are trying to, to, to feed, and, and uh, so you, they can utilize the feed stuff that they have available appropriately. Um, you go purchase hay and that's what you see, which one is the best? Okay, how do you know? Okay, all right, all right. So the yes, so there are characteristics to that feed, color, smell, uh, length of the fiber, um, you know, the presence of mold or not. Um, there are a lot of things that you can look at, but at the end of the day, you don't know what's the ADF, ADF NDF, uh, crude protein. You don't know the amount of minerals. You don't know about the vitamins, okay? So should I feed this one to cow-calf pairs, lactating cows, or should I feed this one to my bulls, and this one to the, uh, you know, to the young stock? I don't know. I copy and pasted this picture straight from Craigslist, okay? I went to the Auburn Craigslist and put hay for sale and got the top five whatever and, and I copied. So this gentleman here was selling that uh, round bale for um, I think it was 70 bucks uh, a, a bale, okay? And this gentleman here was selling his for 40 bucks which one is the best? Both of them said Bahia uh, uh, forages and the best quality around and it's great for your cattle, blah, 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 blah. For a nominal fee, I'll deliver it to you, okay? I don't know. If I were to choose, I, which one would you choose to buy from? Well, not because it's cheaper, but because of what? Because it's, awesome. because it's covered. Absolutely, okay? But then you go like, well, it's cheaper, it's cheaper than this one. Mm, I don't know. Maybe I would, I would spend another 20 bucks and buy that other one. But you don't know. At the end of the day, you truly don't know. So big questions. How do you decide which hay is better? Okay? And how do you decide what hay is worth? Okay, those are big, two, two big questions there, and it's really hard to... Uh, to uh, to come up with that. Um, so sampling, let's sample. Uh, that's what I tell the, the, the clients and the first thing that they ask is, oh, how much that costs? You know, that's, I, I'm not gonna spend time to do that. Well, honestly, I, it depends on the lab that you send it to, but it's somewhere between 20 to 35 bucks, you can get your sample, your hay uh, tested. Okay, so it's $30 that you know for a fact what you got and how to better, to best apply that, um, that, that feed stuff. So square bales, both ends of the bale. 
that there are several, if you Google, several probes out there in the market that you can purchase. There are fancy ones that as you drill to get your sample, the sample falls in a little uh, uh, baggy and you're ready to roll. There are others that you remove the sample and you have to manually put the sample in a bag. So it varies between, you know, 50 bucks to $450, honestly, those uh, tools to get this job done. So it really depends on what um, uh, you, you, you're truly up for it. But both ends of the bale, inside the probe at 90 degree angle, get your, get your uh, uh, sample there. Or from an around bale, you go right at the core of the round bale and take your sample. And typically, like everything else we do, 10 to 12% of the, uh, 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 that amount of, so if you have 10 um, uh, round bales, grab a sample from a couple of them, you should be able to get uh, a, a good representative uh, idea. Some the guidelines of what uh, this is everywhere uh, in the literature um, of the TDN and the crude protein that you are looking for, um, for the different feed stuff, pretty straightforward there. So going back to that one, so which one is the best? Okay. So I'll tell you that this one here had a crude protein of nine. This one here had a crude protein of 11. Okay, is that good or bad? Well, I don't know, there's more things they have to look at, okay? So these are the typical um, uh, uh, characteristics that you, that you look at it, that all the, the hay analysis uh, 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 tests will, will give you back. So your dry matter, your CP, NDF, ADF, um, lignin, uh, relative forage quality, and minerals, not all the labs will provide these results to you. So whenever you contact some of those uh, forage labs, um, make sure that figure it out exactly what you're getting into and wh what, what, what they're gonna offer you, okay? So NDF typically predicts animal intake, ADF digestibility, and uh, uh, so higher NDF, lower intake, higher ADF, lower digestibility. So you gotta kind of play with those um, um, the numbers. Um, so I, it's probably a little small for, for y'all to see in the back, but this is, a, uh, I'm gonna go through a couple of examples here. Um, so right, uh, relative forage quality, 121, that's pretty good. You want that number above 100, okay? So you have your NDF of 70, so that's pretty high. So high the NDF, remember that um, lower the intake. Okay, you want that number to be around 60s, 65-ish. Uh, your ADF, that's pretty good. Okay, because you don't want a lot of uh, 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 um, uh, ADF because of the digestibility, okay. But this lignin here is a, it's a little bit concerning. But overall, good, uh, good uh, uh, energy, Forage, provide good crude protein. So this will probably be uh, a good uh, diet to a uh, good uh, uh, hay to feed to mama cows, okay? Same example here, a little bit better. This one actually is the, the, the results from that bale on the left, okay? So really good uh, crude protein, lower lignin, I like that, okay? But a little bit higher NDF. But I can live with this one all day long. I'm happy with that one, okay? Crude protein of six, not so good. 70% of NDF, okay? It will take forever and a day for that animal to digest that thing. They will chew and chew and chew and chew. It's not gonna go anywhere, okay? So perhaps that will be a good, um, a good forage to offer to feedlot steers, for example, okay? That you're there on a, on a hot diet, a lot of energy from grain, and also you need all that chewing factor for all that bicarb production from the saliva to buffer that rumen to keep things in check, okay? So that would be a hay that I'll probably feed to those guys. Definitely would not feed that to dairy cattle, definitely would not feed that to, you know, cow-calf pair their milking. That's not good, that's not enough for them to produce milk. Um, oh, sorry. Same principle here. Really low ADF, really high NDF, 
not very good forages, okay? So take home message, test, 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 it's 30 bucks, okay? So you know what you're getting into, you know what kind of, what you can do with that. Um, know what you're working for, look at the cattle, visit with the cattle, visit with the client, okay? Just by getting there and see what you're getting into, see what the, the, the client is asking for you to provide, I mean, you go long ways um, um, with that relationship. These are your basics. Again, not very expensive. Contact your extension agent. Um, if, you, if you're not quite sure what to do or where to go, uh, that will be my recommendation to you. And I feel like we veterinarians, it's our job to do this. And at least on my side of the, 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 the fence here, um, my clients tend to blame everything to worms and they love to deworm their cattle. And at the end of the day, Nine times out of nine, nine and a half times out of ten, that's not the problem. Okay, that's the story that I have to tell you. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. What would you consider um, good values as far as your NDF and stuff for equines? How does it work? Um, so values for equines, I do not know. I don't do horses. <laughs> I am scared of them. <laughs> so I don't know from the top of my head, honestly. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Stockler. Thank you, thank you.